Hello everyone and welcome to another battle report for the channel. Today we have a Kings of War battle report. This will battle between dwarves and forces of nature. 2000 points and scenario loot. Uh, overview of the army. Um, this is my attempt at a more fighty dwarves list. So we have a horde of shield breakers, a horde of earth elementals, a regiment of iron guard, a regiment of rifles, uh, two troops of rangers, Army Standard Bear, King on a Beast, Stone Priest, and Greater Earth Elemental. Uh, my opponent is the same opponent from last game, and his list is exactly the same since we played both of these in the same day. Um, but it is a two Salamander Hordes, um, two Beasts of Nature with the Lightning Bolt upgrade, one Beast of Nature with the Ferocious upgrade, a Horde of Fire Elementals, a Horde of Earth Elementals, a druid, a unicorn with inspiring, a unicorn, and a tree herder. So let's go over deployment. Um, again, the scenario was loot. The my opponent from his my left to his right his fire elementals, druid, salamanders. Um, the unpainted carnosaur is the ferocious beast. The triceratops are the laser blasty beasts. Then we have salamanders with the strength upgrade. Uh, tree herder and some earth elementals so on this side we go over to my deployment my right to left um, this is after vanguard dwarves are vanguarded up uh, we have a flame belcher a king on a beast a tank the iron guard a greater earth elemental the horde of earth elementals horde of shield breakers army standard bear rifles and rangers in the farm so um we played uh like I said, um, um, loot, and we ended up with um, putting the tokens all essentially on one side of the board. Um, I've never played loot before, so I was pretty excited. So step into turn one, and the dwarfs win the turn to go first. So, uh, which is pretty good. I was nervous about playing loot uh, with a pretty slow army, but his army isn't super fast. So it was nice to get to go first. So everyone trucks up, as you can see. And everyone on the other side um, f goes forward as fast as possible. Uh, the Stone Priest surges the Greater Earth Elemental ahead. Um, and a little bit of shooting, we get a couple of points of damage on this um, f uh, Beast of Nature. Nothing too significant, just an overview after that. We go into Forces of Nature, turn one. Forces of Nature do a similar thing and advance forward as you would expect um, healing and a couple of lightning bolt shots into my army standard bear uh, this is just a recap oh this isn't a recap sorry oh, no this is a recap he moved right up um, on the other side of the flank right up to my earth elemental so pretty much just moved everybody up pretty solid line step into turn two uh, turn two um, most of my troops advance. My king goes flying into the earth elementals. Um, the greater earth... Yeah, we both have earth elementals, so I'll try to keep that... Uh, forward. My greater earth elemental goes shooting into the um, salamander horde. And everyone else just advances forward, as you can see. In the shooting phase, uh, the rangers, I think, put a wound through on the tree herder. Nothing significant. Um, in the combat, the king does three damage to these earth elementals. My greater earth elemental does two damage to these salamanders. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, we move on to forces of nature. Turn two. Um, the salamander, or the yeah, the salamanders come up as fast as they can. The fire elementals turn, start cutting over to the other side of the board. The Carnosaur comes slamming into my um, shield breakers, and the white Triceratops moves to capture the token, and the other Triceratops moves up just to assist. Uh, on the other side of the board, his Salamanders charge my Greater Earth Elemental, his Earth Elementals charge my King, and his Tree Herder moves around um, the other ones. Uh, in the shooting phase, the... Um, Lightning bolt shots go after my army standard bear and rout him. 
Um, yeah, just showing that they charged. Uh, Bane Chant is cast on the Salamanders here, which is problematic because they are crushing strength one with a strength bonus, and now Bane Chant, so that is three crushing strength. Um, he ends up putting 10 damage on my Greater Earth Elemental and routing him, which was pretty pretty big mistake on my part. I shouldn't have ran him up into him that fast. Um, he's tough, but not invincible, and they overrun like that. Uh, in this combat over here, my king ends up tanking four points of damage from the Earth Elementals and wavering. So that's not great, but at least he's still on the board. Um, this king does have the healing charm, so or um, not the healing charm, the um, regen charm, whatever that's called. Medallion of Life. And just a little out of order. Oh, this isn't shooting. I, I don't know why I put shooting here. Um, combat, the uh, the Carnosaur does uh, five damage to them. So, uh, move into turn three. Dwarves turn three. The king fails his headstrong roll. So he's going to hang out. Um, the shield breakers go charging into the... Carnosaur, the Earth Elementals, and Iron Breaker or Iron Guard go charging into the Salamanders at the top. Um, everybody else in the bottom is just kind of hanging out. Oh, yeah, here's another picture that the Earth Elementals and Iron Guard double charging the Salamanders. The tank goes slamming into the front of the tree man or tree herder, and the Rangers have just enough room to get in and get a flank charge on the tree herder. Uh, in the shooting phase, we put about four damage on these guys. Nothing too significant. And in the combat phase, we put ten damage on the Carnosaur, which is pretty good. Um, pretty good rolling on those guys. Uh, we put about ten damage on these guys combined. And in the much more exciting side, the combined tank and rangers put eleven damage on the tree herder and waver him, which is pretty big. Um, pretty helpful. So, uh, we move into Forces of Nature turn three. Uh, the tree herder backs up um, so that the rangers won't have a flank again. Since he was wavered, he couldn't do a lot. Uh, the earth elementals go charging back into the king. The other side, the uh, white triceratops there uh, does a 180 degree turn to start chugging off the board. Um, the other Triceratops and the Carnosaur double charge my shield breakers and the fire elementals are continuing their slow trek across the board. Uh, on the bottom, these salamanders charge my rangers, which is fine. Uh, just looks like an overview of that from the other side. Uh, a couple points of healing done on the tree herder over here. The Earth Elementals put a couple more points of damage on my king and waver him again. The Salamanders had charged the Earth Elementals here and they did seven points of damage. Which is pretty good for them, but they hold and the combined Laser Forces of Nature and Gilly Forces of Nature uh, beasts um, combined only did five points of damage to my shield breakers, which is pretty low. Pretty pretty lucky for them. Um, the rangers take a surprisingly low surprisingly low seven seven points of damage in route, uh, and that's how they overrun. So we move into turn four. Turn four, my king fails his headstrong, so he's going to sit there again. Um, you can see there the rangers, the rangers in the tank recharge the tree herder. Um, with nothing to lose, the rifles go charging into the uh, salamanders. Um, the shield breakers charge the carnosaur. Oh, and here's a picture of that. Yeah. So the earth elementals and iron guard double charge the salamanders again. The tank and the rangers go. Charging back into the tree herder, this time in the front. And the uh, the flame belter moves up to get a, a nice shot on that uh, unicorn there. You can see behind his lines. Um, finally got a successful Bane Chant cast, so I put a Bane Chant on my Earth Elementals here. Um, with some pretty good rolling um, from the steam tank, we uh, route the tree herder, which is 
pretty big. Um, that really helps me take control of this side of the board. Um, he's a tree herders are pretty tough, and getting to smash that tank in was pretty lucky for me. Um, continuing the streak of luck, these guys quite handily take out the uh, salamander horde they had crashed into. Um, and reform like this, those elementals are carrying a loot marker at this point, so now they're going to go try to run away. The uh, Continuing the killing streak here, the um, shield breakers um, knocked themselves out the carnosaur they had attacked. And surprisingly, the gunners did a whopping four points of damage or something like that to, uh, to this horde. Or they probably did less, but it's insignificant. Um... So we go with a Forces of Nature turn four. <clears throat> the white beast of nature is running away. The other Triceratops goes charging into the Shield Breakers again. The Salamanders go smacking into those rifles, as you would expect. And on the other side, the uh, Unicorns, um, without anybody over there to heal anymore, go smashing into both the Rangers and my Flame Belcher. Um, I didn't mention it in the last turn, but my Flame Belcher completely failed to put any damage on that unicorn. Um, so, uh, just, uh, oh, this is the afterthought. Um, this this unicorn does a whopping one damage to my Rangers. Um, the Earth Elementals uh, take out my king, so he wasn't very helpful over there. Um, yeah, so he's routed. That's how they reform. The other unicorn takes out my flame belter in one round of turn, one round of combat, and this beast of nature um, fluffs and completely does zero damage to these guys. Uh, these salamanders do only six damage to these guys, uh, to my rifles, and they end up holding, which is you know pretty good. Um, really slowed down that side of the flank, or that side of the board. Yeah. So, uh, dwarfs turn five. Dwarfs turn five. The the brave riflemen charge back into the salamander horde. The shield breakers um, do what they can do. They charge back into the beast. The Earth Elementals, uh, my Earth Elementals, continue their march off away from everybody of danger. The Iron Guard um, and the tank just move over in this general direction. Um, we each have a token at this point, and the only other token on the board is right there. So, just doing some maneuvering and positioning around it, um, the Rangers charge the earth elementals at the bottom um, this is just an overview of that you can see where everyone's going uh, and shooting the, the tank gets a point of damage through on the unicorn there a um, couple points of damage on the salamander horde um, a reasonable amount of damage put here on uh, the triceratops and a couple points of damage on these earth elementals. Um, no one broke, no one wavered, nothing. Um, just an overview there. Of that, you bounce off. Uh, forces of Nature turn five. His Triceratops makes it off the board, so he claims that token. The Salamanders go in to f hopefully finish off the rifles. The Triceratops goes back in to the Shield Breakers. The Fire Elementals keep their slow chug across the board. The Earth Elementals go charging into the Rangers, and the Unicorns there um, just position themselves um, for healing and try to redirect some angles. Um, essentially, he wants to keep me off of that token, which makes sense. Um, so, just showing that again, I guess. Um, salamanders come in and not surprisingly route my rifles it was just good they held that long so they reform like that <laughs> this triceratops comes in and does two damage which is pretty sad um, so those guys are fine the earth elementals um, smack up these rangers and route them pretty well 
and reform like such. Um, yeah, just a, an overview, I guess, the end of that turn, an overview here of what it looks like. Um, so we go into turn six, uh, still a tie game. So see where it goes. Um, these are a little faster pictures. The game obviously starts picking up at this point, but, uh, shield breakers take care of triceratops. No problem. And reform. Um, here you can see my stone priest has valiantly decided to, uh, sacrifice himself to chaff up those fire, fire elementals. And this is the uh, the combat result over here um, against these guys. My my tank went in, did one point of damage to his unicorn. My iron guard went in and did three points of damage to their unicorn. So nobody broke through turn six to get to that token. They they both just utterly failed. So I gave them some bubbles to talk about that. Forces of Nature turn 6. Um, I knew the Salamanders were going to come into the flank of these guys, but it doesn't really matter. So I was just hoping, hey, if you come in, maybe you'll roll double ones. You know, maybe they'll make it off. It didn't matter. They just had to be angled in a way that if there was a turn 7, they might be able to do something. On this side, the Earth Elementals and the Unicorn double charge my Iron Guard. Well, the other unicorn charges my tank. So you might be asking yourself, why did he charge the Iron Guard and not just move on to the token? Well, the token was out of his movement range, um, just barely. So he could charge but he, over it, but he couldn't move on to it. So that's why he did this. Um, again, it's, it's, he's also hoping the fact that maybe he'll take some stuff out and we'll get a turn seven. Um, as you would expect, the <laughs> salamanders in the flank take out these guys, no problem. The overrun, um, of course, the earth ele fire elementals take out my stone priest, no problem. Um, the combined earth elementals and unicorn do about nine damage and waver my iron guard. Um, the other unicorn doesn't do any damage. To his guys. Um, so then we go to roll a four, five, or six to see if we get a turn seven, and we don't. So uh, we ended the game there, but the game ended like this. So um, as you can see, the earth elementals would have to bounce an inch back off my iron guard. Now, did they did they collect the token? We don't. We didn't know. Like we we looked at the rules and. Um, I, I don't have them in front of me, but it's something along the lines of you, if you end your movement, not including a vanguard or a surge or something on the token, you pick it. But does bouncing off after a combat count as that move? We, we weren't sure. Um, so we, we called it a tie, maybe. Um, it's, it's hard to say. Like I said, it repeated, the, the four the four shamblers ended up on top of the token following combat resolution. I, I don't know if that counts as picking up a token or not. It could. I mean, if but if Vanguard doesn't count for that, you didn't end your move on that. You, I don't know. It's, I, I think that might be something we should ask to get, or I should ask to get FAQ'd, because it's not, it's not terribly clear on the conditions to pick up a token, at least not from, from my perspective. Uh, my thoughts on the game. It was a super fun game. Um, it was fairly evenly tied the entire time. Um, taking out the tree herder was huge for my side. But I didn't have too much concern that I wasn't able to get one of the tokens. And he obviously was going to get one of the tokens. So it was just a little bit of a little bit of a scrap to see who might be able to pick up that last one. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing a more uh, fighty dwarf list as opposed to a lot of guns and organ guns. Um, I think my opponent enjoyed that more, too. Um, I probably actually got me motivated to finish painting some, some more dwarves I have um, just so I can do that. Uh, I think I ser severely uh, under underused or misused my king in this instance. Um, that king should not have probably gone into the front of Earth Elementals. He is not fighty enough to to make his way through that 
and he got unlucky enough to get wavered twice in a row so that he was just sitting there. Um, he could have made a lot a lot better usage of him just like getting a token or something and running off with it or trying to get into a flank of something. Um, and as the other thoughts, yeah, I, I want to get another combat unit painted up. Um, the only thing I'm really bummed about is I can't find uh, any bull workers that I like that much. I, I don't really care for the aesthetic of the Mantic Dwarves. I don't think they match very well with the Games Workshop ones, and being that I have so many Games Workshop ones, I'm going to try to match that. But, um, yeah, I don't know yet. I'll have to look around. I have a lot more <laughs> Dwarves with crossbows and stuff and whatnot, and other things that aren't painted, but I don't I don't want to do that. I'd rather do more fighty, although the Rangers are fairly fighty, so... Anyway, um, please please leave a comment if you have any sort of a, a rules outcome on, on whether or not I did or didn't tie this game. Um, we're, we were a little bit curious, but otherwise, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll try to get another battle report up soon. Bye.